Um, what I was hoping to talk about is, well, obviously the tiered historic designation, um, but I think it would be beneficial since we cover East Falls and Germantown. Uh, Germantown primarily, I think, has had a lot of issues with the uh, development and and this is how the Savon Haskins conversation started. So I thought that since you had given a, a presentation to the Mount Airy CDC in February of this year that included sort of an overview of the nature of, of the historic designation in the Northwest, would you be able to speak a little bit about Mount Airy Germantown and give us sort of an overview? Sure, I just wanna uh, clarify that, you know, this is, I'm just, uh, I'm with a, very small nonprofit called the Keeping Society of Philadelphia. I'm not really affiliated with the city. I'm oh, not a yeah. city government employee. Um, and uh, I don't like, I was on the mayor's task force, but I don't actually like represent the task force. You know, I mean, it's just one man's opinion. Right, right. Uh, very dedicated preservationist and historian. Uh, and we've seen you quite a bit online. I believe you had, um, did you have a hand in the, um, uh, what is it here in uh, the old Odd Fellows Hall here in East Falls, um, mm -hmm. Kelly Drive? I, I, you might have written the did, paperwork. No, I, di I didn't. I think the staff of the Historical Commission wrote that nomination. Oh, gotcha. Um, yeah. Um, I don't, I'm trying to think East Falls. I don't know if I've done much in East Falls. Um, I did recently uh, nominate, successfully nominate the, um, there's a house on Schoolhouse Lane, um, that was um, Eleanor Houston Smith's house. Right. It, it was, uh, it's like a Gothic revival kind of like mansion slash farmhouse. Right. Um, yeah. And it was originally Mayor Henry's house or not originally, but at one point it was, it was, he was the Civil War era mayor of Philadelphia. Um, and uh, so that was one. And I, some people like maybe back in the day would have called that Germantown, that area. Um, but now I would say it's East Falls. Um, okay. So I think uh, Nancy Rhodes, who was a Strawbridge, she corrected me one time when I uh, met with her about that area. She's like, that's not East Falls, that's Germantown. <laughs> and she grew up, like, or she, her grandmother lived on Schoolhouse Lane. So it's just funny to hear how different people, people used to want to extend every area to be called Germantown. Yeah, and that was the Tony area, right? I mean, that was where people wanted to be. Exactly, exactly. Um, but I think, you know, Germantown and Mount Airy uh, represent sort of the larger city in that, um, you know, only about two to three percent of what is, you know, of the built environment is protected. That's a that's sort of a rough number. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, in Philadelphia at large, um, that's about the same statistic. And, um, you know, it's it's sad. Um, you know, you might say that um, you think that like a higher percentage of, of Germantown, Mount Airy, even Chestnut Hill would be protected. Mm -hmm. um, Chestnut Hill, of course, has a, the Conservancy, which deals, which, you know, has, um, you know, they, they take on like, um, you know, they take, you know, they try to save a lot of land and landscape and such. Mm -hmm. um, whereas like in, in Mount Airy and Germantown, we don't really have, um, you know, any organization that's just dedicated to preservation, despite the fact that it's, you know, sort of an embarrassment of riches, as they say. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you just turn any corner, even like just the row, row houses are really nice. Um, and then almost everything else that exists is, you know, potentially historic. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, like one of my main concerns is that Germantown Avenue uh, was made a National Historic Landmark in 1965. Mm -hmm. um, which was before the National Register of Historic Places even existed. Mm -hmm. And um, we still, and it is still not protected um, as a district. And mm -hmm. so what that means is, is like, you know, all of the little buildings that, you know, if you looked at them individually, you might be like, well, you know, this building isn't amazing. Um, but they all contribute to that sort of historic built environment. Mm -hmm. um, and we've lost between like 10 and 15% of the district since it was designated. Okay. So, and we're, we still continue to lose buildings, you know, several a year, um, which will continue and probably at an escalated rate if development continues in the same direction. Yeah, which um, is picking up again after COVID, obviously. So it's probably starting to gain momentum again, I would think. 
It is, it is, um, you know, and we just, there was just an announcement that um, some buildings at, um, I think it's 5902, 5904, and mm -hmm. 5906 Germantown Avenue, um, you know, are being demolished. And they're just like simple two and three story store commercial buildings that have been in need in, of investment in a, for a long time. But, mm -hmm. but the fact is because nothing's protected, because we don't have a demolition delay, we don't have any means. Once that demolition permit is filed, if there's nothing, if there's no nomination, then, um, you know, we are really, you know, at a loss for anything to do. So, so with, with Chestnut Hill, obviously with the conservancy, so it is a financial issue, really. It's Mount Airy and, and Germantown don't have the kind of financial resources to designate it or to create a conservancy or use it in any way to preserve, correct? Correct. And, and we actually have, so we, we have the Germantown Historical Society, um, but their, their mission is the you know, preservation of the various houses and sites that, that are under their sort of consortium of, of mm -hmm. um, you know, different properties and organizations. You know, it's, what's interesting is that you know, Chestnut Hill is obviously an, a beautiful and amazing area, um, but it's not a National Historic Landmark. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. so, you know, um, and of course, like National Historic Landmarks, are like the highest distinction you can get. Right. Um, and so um, what's, you know, also interesting is their historical society is able to totally focus on just general preservation. Mm -hmm. um, whereas, you know, the historical society in Germantown already it has like a massive collection. They have all these houses that they deal with. Mm -hmm. um, and then the various organizations that manage them. And so, you know, th they don't even really get to focus on historic preservation um, as a, you know, of the area. Yeah, because each um, one has its own board, correct? Each historic house just about has its own board. So they're focused more on their particular turf, if you will. But the general historic nature of the Germantown, in particular on Germantown Avenue, is not really their purview. We're not, no. I mean, of course, they're, they're concerned. I'm sure they're concerned about it, but it's not, you know, they're not monitoring what's being demolished or what's being, you know, there's no huge movement in the Germantown Historical Society to designate Germantown Avenue. I mean, they're supportive of efforts to some mm -hmm. level, mm -hmm. um, you know, from a, you know, morale standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, you know, that isn't their their mission um, that I, I mean, and that's just my opinion. Um, yeah. I can't speak for them, but yeah. um, no, it is, it's really sad because um, you know, what will happen is, is when you lose enough buildings, then, then you lose your lot, your, then you would have ultimately would probably lose the national historic landmark status. So, um, you know, what's crazy is, you know, Ridge Avenue, which, which isn't designated at all at the national level, they had, well, and they've had a lot, probably a lot more significant loss. Mm -hmm. um, and I would also argue that Ridge Avenue did, never had the, um, the level of resources that Germantown Avenue had. It was never the same type of road in the colonial period. It was a road, but it never had as many buildings. It was never as densely developed. Um, its right. history is is rich and um, important, but it's not as, um, it's, it, I would just say that it's not as significant um, yes. on like on a national level. Um, and it's so, you know, of course they had that demolition delay and then the historical commission wrote a nomination. Um, so one of the things I am, we are working on the Keeping Society is a nomination for Germantown Avenue. Um, but of course, like it's, it's mainly all volunteers. So Right. Um, you know, we do what we can and hopefully it'll get done. But even then, it'll take forever for it to be reviewed. You mm -hmm. know, it'll meet, you know, property owners will be mad, um, et cetera, et cetera. And that's where so, this brings us to the other discussion. You know? yeah. yeah. About the tier designation, because that's one of the reasons property owners get mad is because they need to go to this white glove level of, you know, to maintain the property. Correct. That's correct. Um, and um you know, that's one of the things that I really push for on the task force. I mean, I'm at one uh, end of the spectrum, I am like ardently against demolition and major alteration. I mean, of course, I hate to see original things torn out. I, I hate to see, you know, somebody slap a Home Depot door on like a beautiful historic building. Um, it's funny, in D well, I used to live in DC and when I would see that, I would be like, oh, 
Now, when I see someone putting a Home Depot door on a building in Philadelphia, I'm like, just happy they're not tearing it down. I'm like, oh, well, they probably wouldn't be putting a new door on there if they were going to demolish it. Mm -hmm. uh, isn't that sad? Um, but no, I think the, the real thing is like on the task force, I really fought for, you know, anti-demolition, anti-major um, alteration, but also fought for flexibility um, with historic, with, you know, material replacement, design review, things of that nature. Um, I'm sort of at this point kind of the do no harm, you know, like um, maybe, you know, you know, windows are a huge thing. Imagine mm -hmm. the fact that most people would be fearful of designation unless they thought their property had some kind of potential value as a tear down and rebuild. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, most people that live in neighborhoods that are, that are, you know, that may not be designated, but they're technically historic, um, you know, they would be fearful of designation because of windows. Mm -hmm. So imagine mm -hmm. you have whole areas of the city that are being destroyed and then and it's because of a window munton profile a very expensive you know two sashes mm -hmm. and that's and honestly they are cost prohibitive you know the, the ones that would be required mm -hmm. um you know you have a wood window and it has to be and then of course it's going to be clad in like aluminum or something mm -hmm. um, or whatever it is that's approved and it's like, well, if it's already clad in something else, then, you know, why does it matter? You know, right. um, I think for some buildings, it really is important. I think along Germantown Avenue, for let's take that as an example. You know, the 18th century buildings, I could see why those would be held to a higher standard just because mm -hmm. that's like one of the main areas of significance for Germantown Avenue. But when you have like a row of two story, mm -hmm. you know, stores that, you know, are just these cute kind of Spanish revival. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course, like a lot of, on the smaller buildings, those features are important, um, but I think they're not as important as making preservation accessible and affordable to everyone. Right, and that's um, part of it too, is you need to designate which ones are, would be at your top of your list, which ones would be the 18th century buildings, and then you've got the daily life buildings, so to speak, that still have mm -hmm. character, but just aren't, you know, Washington didn't sleep there, you know, that kind right, of Right, exactly. Um, and I think there's, you know, many other, you know, factors to consider um when you especially when you look at a row of houses the windows you know unless it's like some amazing victorian design that like really the windows are just everything and, and let's say the windows are actually still there mm -hmm. then that's that's a different thing but um you know when you in most rows you know it's the rhythm that, of the rows of the row houses that matters it's that sort of continuity um you know so it's like maybe you don't you're not making the window smaller you're just using a replacement window that's that's not, you know, that maybe is within a, a wider criteria. Okay. Um, you know, yeah. or, you know, I, they've, they're already pretty flexible about roofing materials. Mm -hmm. um, even on the 18th century properties, they don't, they don't usually require you to put like a wood shingle on there anymore or, or a slate. Like, now there's right. certain houses that they might be, you know, more, they might lobby for, you know, you know, step higher. Um, mm -hmm. But you could look around the city and see, you know, a lot of buildings change, um, you know, their roofing materials are not, they're like maybe slate line instead of slate, actual slate. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there already are some flexibility, but I think, um, you know, there's, there, I think the real goal would be to have, you know, new designations really uh, sort of clarify what is, what features are the most important. Mm -hmm. And maybe, you know, the features that are like, you know, secondary. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, why is it significant? If it's significant because it's one of the most unusual Victorian designs, well, then, you know, that might, might be different, you know, in terms of windows or whatever mm -hmm. the other features are. But if you're talking about, you know, just a row of houses that are significant because they're part of, you know, the development of the area and, you know, they re represent a certain group that lived there. Mm -hmm. um economic you know or social history um you know then i don't know that the window profiles and, and munton profiles are really um a make or break scenario right yeah um, and is is this something that uh so so it sounds like it might be with the task force was there a lot of progress made on that i mean where are we at with that designation initiative so, you know, the task force really just like discussed different ideas and had committees and then made recommendations. 
Um, you know, they, they didn't, we weren't, we weren't like a body. Unfortunately, we were not a body that was implementing things. Um, so our recommendation on the task force was to explore some kind of tier designation um, approach. Um, you know, there's sort of, uh, there were like a couple different district options. There's like the reg, the, the, you know, option that we have now. Um, there's the sort of second option, which would just be that, you know, certain buildings are, you know, you know, where you really clarify like the, the, the primary features that are important to maintain. And then that's kind of like an approach towards a tier designation. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there might be like something that's more like a conservation district, but maybe, um, has demolition review. Got it. Um, the problem with the conservation district though, is that every, I mean, the, you know, a lot of conservation districts that you can demolish every building in a conservation district the way they are now, mm. um, you know, unless it's designated as historic, um, as long, but then your new design is reviewed. And so it's, it's not really the, the way they currently are set up is not really a, is, is not a tool yet. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully that might, that might change. Um, we've already done some tier designations, even mm -hmm. though there isn't technically a, a new law or rule, I have lobbied and sort of um, argued for tier designation, ex uh, especially on industrial properties mm -hmm. that are, um, you know, in areas where maybe like the, and it's, I hate to say, you know, the, the ones that I've done have mainly been for developers. Okay. Um, and that was just me being the nominator and them not being thrilled about the nomination. And so me arguing for um, you know, a sort of downgraded approach to how the building's regulated. Okay. Um, so it's sort I of like sort of, a, you're sort of meeting, a, meeting them a little bit, like kind of like a, not sort of a compromise. A compromise, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the same thing when when um, there was going to be some buildings potentially demolished at Wayne Junction. Um, so we, I really um, aided Ken Weinstein, Ken Weinstein, and um, you know trying to get the historical commission to to designate the district uh more expeditiously mm -hmm. and you know one of the things that i had really pushed for with that um to get him to you know persuade him to go that route was you know pushing for that sort of tiered approach to how the buildings are regulated mm -hmm. um you know it isn't as um beautiful as if you put the perfect windows in but at the same time you know, if you go out and see the new brewery out there and, and um, the old Blaisdell Pencil Factory, I mean, it's still a really cool looking reuse of the building. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's, I think, um, you know, what you'd want to see. I, I, I prefer, to, I'd like to see it more for like, I mean, even more so for people who have less means than developers. Right. Um, that's where it's really important. And I think that's, you know, it's... Um, the city, as, as always, the, the city tends to fold to, you know, development first. Um, but I think that, you know, and I'm willing to be the advocate, you know, I'm willing to be as much of an advocate, advocate as I can be, to, you know, time allotting mm -hmm. um, for, you know, homeowners as well. If, you know, I can't represent everybody in the whole city, but right. certainly if people are getting a hard time and they need relief, you know, there are provisions, of course, that they could plead hardship and all that. But as we know, most hardship applications are filed by lawyers. And, you know, the, the people who are having issues replacing windows are not going to be hiring a lawyer no. to, you know, argue that. So that's why I think it's so important that, you know, it not just be, you know, me there lobbying, but really a change in policy, um, right. how things are designated. Right. Uh, exceptions for certain cases, you know, things that are uh, more set in stone. So you don't need an advocate. Yeah. Ken had know. mentioned, I know in that, in that um, Facebook thread that you, had, you and he had been discussing, he talked about the historic, uh, historic preservation trust fund working in conjunction with the tiered approach might be a good answer for average to lower income folks. Mm -hmm. I don't really know how far along that is. Um, mm -hmm. I wasn't on the, that was that came out of the incentives committee. I wasn't on the incentives committee um, on the task force, um, but I know that is one of the things that the alliance is pushing for. Mm -hmm. What this would be is like, um, you know, if developers would would pay into a trust fund, mm -hmm. you know, um, 
in certain circumstances, um, let's say they want a zoning uh, bonus or something like that, I believe is what triggers that, or mm -hmm. maybe they're not offering, um, you know, public housing. I mean, of course, like the preservation uh, trust is not going to get the same and nor should it really, uh, you know, contribution is like, let's say affordable housing or something of, of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that is an option. Um, I, I just, you know, I worry that I think the tiered approach is a more immediate um, solution. Right. You know, if you're an, if you're a homeowner on a nice block in Germantown or wherever mm -hmm. and development starts to ramp up and you know, you're, you know, lower to middle income, but you own, why shouldn't you be assured the same protections as somebody, you know, in, you know, in, uh, I mean, let's say Ch Chestnut Hill, but like, let's say West Philly or even mm -hmm. Center City, you know, um, without having these stringent regulations mm -hmm. um, that really are just based on sort of this ideal approach, as, as, as you said, white glove approach. Mm -hmm. um that's the term i actually really like to use yeah um yeah because that's what it is it's a white glove approach and of course like well i would love to see the whole city frozen in amber as it was in 1945 mm -hmm. or before you know it, well, that's not the world we live in today right and yeah. you know if we're gonna go that approach then we have a um impossible fight what um, I wanted to change the tack just slightly because I remember the first time that uh, we were in the crowd uh, with the when they were doing the um, presentations about Germantown High, and I remember you had spoken at that meeting briefly at the mic. Uh, what um, that seemed to be a historical designation situation, but I wasn't quite clear into how that how it became designated and how that made it possible for them to move ahead without any kind of community input. Well, that's a very unfortunate how that went down. Um, I think, you know, I worked with Germantown, I mean, uh, Germantown United to nominate the property. Um, mm -hmm. The first and, you know, concern, the concern of the building being demolished, you know, was less so um, because it's such a huge building and the, de the development in that area is not like great enough to, to really think, oh, they're going to go to the... Uh, effort of demolishing that but mm -hmm. they showed basically like a um you know convenience store or a mcdonald's sitting in the front lawn of germantown high school where which is sort of like a has come to really appear as a park mm -hmm. um and so mm -hmm. one of the main concerns was designating the property so that the open park space which of course the city itself should have protected before offloading it for a low amount to you know, developers who would even consider proposing something like that for the site. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that was one of the reasons it got nominated. Then, sorry, there's like a oh. gnat in here. Um, and there's, um, you know, so that's one of the reasons it got nominated. And, um, of course, the building's worthy of preservation. And it, mm -hmm. that's another, that's the, the other reason it was nominated. But I think, you know, we really wanted to make sure that that, you know, park in the front was not built on, um, and certainly not with a McDonald's or some other really insulting, you know, development um, mm -hmm. that, you know, the neighbors would feel that they, you know, had no choice but to talk about. What unfortunately happened with that, though, was that it took so long for the commission to review the nomination, go through the process, and then, like, right at the moment where they finally, it was finally on the agenda. It was like a year later. Um, the task force had ended. The Alliance had hired, um, the Preservation Alliance had hired a lobbyist. Uh, mm -hmm. or not, I think it was a lobbyist or a, you know, somebody to, to basically talk with. Um, I'm pretty sure it was a lobbyist or, you know, they were basically hiring a political consultant um, or, you know, government relations consultant to um, get some of those recommendations past the incentives, like mm -hmm. the zoning variants. Um, so right at the moment where like Germantown High School was about to be designated, this law was being passed, which I believe actually Councilwoman Bass co-sponsored. Mm -hmm. um, and what mm -hmm. happened was is about six months of negotiations with the neighbors had been going on. And um, so we 
you know, when, when all this came together, we asked for a continuance. They gave us, I think, two, maybe three months of a continuance. Um, it might have totaled about three months because, um, you know, the, the, the time it takes for the committees to meet and then go back and reschedule. Um, and then when, and then after another three months, you know, this is into this year, um, they still didn't have an agreement worked out with the developer. Um, and then when Germantown United asked for another continuance, they couldn't get another continuance. And so all the negotiations with the developer were just moot at that point because he got his zoning anyway. Right. Yeah. And, and um, which is really, you know, unfortunate. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's terrible. Yeah. Um, and that was one of the things that, you know, Germantown United explained that this is really bad for the community. Um, if, you know, they hadn't already started negotiations, you know, I could understand, you know, it, it made it much worse mm-hmm. having those negotiations, um, you know, already underway. Right. And I think maybe, you know, as much as I am an advocate for um, incentives for development, um, for preservation, especially preservation oriented, it is um, questionable whether this particular incentive is, you know, really the best for communities. Um, you know, it's it's worth revisiting, or maybe there's some other triggers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it it needs to be potentially revisited. And um, you know, I wasn't again on the incentives committee, and so um, it wasn't as um, as much in my mind as other things were. Of course, you know, uh, one of the, you know, the things that we recommended was like a survey that would lead to a demolition delay for all the properties on the survey. Of course, that wasn't acted on immediately. That'll take years. But <laughs> incentives for the developers, that's, that's, we got that done in 24 hours. Under the line, yes. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So <laughs> that was, that's one where I think, you know, the originally that development incentive was, really mainly for like churches and buildings that are very difficult to reuse. Mm -hmm. Um, I could probably, you know, I can say my personal bias would be maybe that is a great uh, thing for church buildings, Mm -hmm. you know, where it's going to be extremely hard and not really that profitable to reuse those buildings. A school, an old factory, you know, those are actually pretty easy buildings to reuse. Yeah. So maybe the develop in order to get that incentive, the development has to check a few boxes first and it isn't just a square footage box. I mean, if I have a carriage house behind my house that I want to put a second unit in um, or I wanted to put like a little shop in or an office, Mm -hmm. uh, that wouldn't meet the criteria because it isn't so many square feet. Okay. You know, so, you know, something that would be completely harmless to the neighborhood you know, would not be able to enjoy this. Whereas something that's a huge development, that would. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. there are some, you know, just basic inequities in, in how some of these things are done, which, are, which is a huge problem. Um, but I do think one of the uh, main things that you can offer everybody is just this tiered approach. Yeah. Because it is, it's a built-in incentive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, it, and you're right. It keeps people, it allows them to stay in their homes and to keep it up to up to snuff, but doesn't uh, doesn't break the bank for windows, say, or you know, roofing uh, roofing uh, improvements. Uh, is there any way that uh, anyone who would hear this interview or could 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 assist? What, what's your recommendation for somebody that wants to? They they believe in preservation. They hate to see these buildings go too. Can they contact your or the organization you work with, what's what's a good way to get involved and try to get your voice in there? They could email me at keeper at keepingphiladelphia.org. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, or just Google my name, Oscar Beiser, and all, every nomination has my personal cell phone number on it. Okay. Um, I have that on there because, you know what, I don't, you know, if someone reach out reaches out to me and, you know, they want to find a way to compromise, I am, my ears are always open. Okay. Um, my goal is preservation. I'm completely against demolition in almost all cases. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, there are exceptions, obviously, and there are like, you know, levels of demolition. You know, you could keep a facade, you could keep the front block of the building. You could. Mm-hmm. There are different ways to mitigate loss. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, reaching out to me at e- by email, uh, looking me up and giving me a call, mm-hmm. um, if they want to get involved with the nomination, if they want to make a donation, if they want to, um, you know, or just, you know, reach out to your elected representatives and say, mm-hmm. we need change. We, we need, the community should have input on, de- on demolition. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the, you, in, you know, thinking of it, I guess you're in East Falls. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you need to think about Indian Queen Lane. You know, it's a, a gorgeous street. And to mm-hmm. think that like most of the stuff on, on that street can be demolished. Yeah. By yeah. simply going online and pushing a button on your computer, you could submit an incomplete demolition application and that would have more merit than this historic building. Mm. So that, you know, because it's not designated. Yes. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I thank you for taking the time. Okay. So thanks awesome. again for the time. I appreciate it, Oscar. Thank you so much. You take care now. You too. Bye-bye. Bye.